Yeah. Okay. Just a few quick things. I took this picture for my wife. Yes, it's sideways. Don't you ask how funny y'all look when you do this? I saw a shirt. I saw a shirt a while back, and I loved it. It was written. It was written this way, and this the word said something about. Do you realize how silly you look with your head that direction? Yeah. And that was the shirt. I love that shirt. So I took a picture of it. I didn't buy it. I do that a lot with shirts. So anyway, this was in. The uh, motel that the Catholic Church built, it's a moneymaker thing, and they had this piano that, in my, in my opinion, what we have in there, even what we have at home, is nicer than what they had sitting there in the middle of this little room, and it says, this piano is for professional players only, and it was not that nice of a piano, but I took that for my wife to see, so it was, it was there. Uh, this, this, okay, just so you know. You guys have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know, but uh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Just uh, some preliminary pictures before we get into uh, Magdala. And this is outside of the, the place. They made this mosaic thing. This got uh, the Galilee region and everything all around us. You'll see Nazareth up here, uh, Decapolis on the other side of the water. Uh, so it shows this in different areas. It was a neat thing they did. So I took a couple of pictures of that. And I tried to do a panoramic and it turned out looking like a oval. But uh, it is what it is. This is just out. This is where Magdala is. Magdala is immediately on the coast. So here, I keep pointing. Let's use this. What we're seeing back over here, this is where you would get to this area right over on that side is where... Uh, Jesus would have gone and cast the demons out of the man. They went into the pigs, rushed down into the sea. That was right over here. Up in this area is where the Decapolis is, where he told that, where that man went and to spread the news of Jesus. And he did an awesome job at doing that. So this on this side, so that's the other side when he would refer to it. This is this side, the Jewish side. You can see Magdala is right here. And there was a fort. Magdala is a major fishing port, or was a major fishing port for that region. Just another view of it outside. Beautiful area. And this is the last two of this thing. Um, this is our guy, Fote. You can't see it, and this had nothing to do with the site we were at. Fote, one of the things he liked to do was to collect artifacts, and you pay through your teeth to collect artifacts. So you're, he's got right there one of the um, oil lamps that they called him the foot lamp. And then he had the cruise of oil. Let me see if I can do this so you can get a good view. That gives you an idea of the size of those things. They're very tiny. And this, to buy, he bought these from a place that had them. With, it was from the first century. It would have been from the time of Christ. So he carried them um, in, whoa, bubble wrap, come on, bubble wrap in a box. He just, he had those things guarded. And, uh, but I really, I enjoyed seeing those. And it does help you to see, okay, why would the, why would the, the 10 virgins, why would some of them be saying, you know, we can't spare any? Well, they won't, can't spare any because that's all there was. It was this little bitty thing. And that lamp was going to be out in no time. I say no time, but you see the picture. It was just, it was a, I enjoyed seeing these and being able to, you know, put a picture in my mind to what he was going, what, what uh, Jesus was referring to. Now let's stop here for just a minute. Okay. So that's all of those. Good. In Israel. If you are going to build, and it doesn't matter what you're going to build, if you're going to build, you must hire and have someone from the country, from the leadership, who is over archaeology stuff, over digs, they must be present when you do your dig. And the reason they do that is because there is so much stuff. And what had happened at Magdala was the Catholic Church? I mean, they're 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 not 
ignorant. They know that in this case, Americans come over there and they spend money. They have to get a motel. They have to be places. So they built a, they were going to build and they did a very nice motel. It was an upscale motel and it is totally a money maker for the Catholic church. So that's what their goal was. Build this motel and rent it out. So they, they got the leadership of the country in. They dug down about one foot and they hit the site. So there was almost no digging necessary. Everything that they were looking for was within one foot of the dig. And this was a huge discovery. This Magdala, um, it is one of different numbers I'm hearing, six or seven synagogues that they found from the time of Christ. That's all there are. And this, this is probably one of the best known ones it is a it, it was very much intact and and that's hard to imagine because uh history wise in eight okay, what's what's the date we know for the jews getting wiped out 70 in ad 68 because in seven it's not like all of a sudden in 70 there was this massive boom and you're done this was a this was war this was a buildup. so in ad 68 Rome was getting kind of ticked off at the zealots. The zealots were making raids. Kind of, you might say guerrilla warfare. They were doing raids. The zealots were causing trouble. Now, if you remember, and I'm going to show you on here. Do you remember um, I showed you the place where I had stayed at, um, oh, what's the name of that? Gennesaret. Gennesaret. Gennesor, and now Gennesaret. But I was there. About a mile and a half down the road is Magdala. About a mile and a half down the road is where Ray was in Tiberius. Tiberius was Roman. So you, you never see Jesus. I'm not saying he didn't go there, but you never see it recorded in the Gospels about Tiberius. So that close, you had this major Roman stronghold. And I put this back on here. Let me see if I can get this. Here we go. I'll try to stop it at the right time. But you know what? It would help. You hit record again. Yes. So it's recording on my SS. I didn't hear that. I hit it after. Oh, okay. Okay. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay. We just passed right up in here, that area is going to be where the motel was. So Gennesaret, Gennesaret, right over here at the, here is Mount Arbel. So right in here is your uh, Magdalene, which is what we're looking at today. And then watch the link there. There's Tiberius. So I, I'm wanting you to see this so you can, and this is another thing we keep talking about. Everything is so close. So here's what happens. AD 68, the Romans are upset with the Jews. So the Romans, they're based right here. All they do is start marching up this road and right there is Magdala. This is one of the first places that the Roman, the Roman soldiers would have come to. And what are they doing? We see, we know they tore down the temple. They they tore down the the temple. They also tore down every synagogue and destroyed every synagogue they could find. It wasn't just one place they destroyed. So here's what happened: they get up here to Magdala, and when they are at Magdala, the Jews knew they're coming. Everything's close. They know what's going on. So what the Jews did, smart people. They said, you know, we don't want these people to destroy our synagogue. This may sound bad, so we're going to do it ourselves. They dismantled their synagogue. They took all the walls down. They took them from the synagogue, and you'll see some pictures in a minute. They took them from the synagogue up to the road and just totally blocked up the road. Their whole goal was, let's be a hindrance to the Romans as they're coming across. We want to make them, we want to aggravate them. We want to slow them down. 
And they did it. So here the Romans come. The Romans see this synagogue is just destroyed. Their job's done. They kept going. So they left the base of the synagogue totally intact. They left a lot of the pieces of the synagogue there. And that has that has been one of the biggest finds is the piece, some of the pieces they found. And that's what we're going to look at replicas of in a moment. Now, one of the things that was a little confusing, and as, as you notice right here, you've got this big hillside right behind Magdala. And what ended up happening, keep in mind, that place was destroyed around 70 AD. This place was found in the 2000s. You've had almost 2,000 years, and let's even say 1,500 years, because you know things were already, things happened over those years. You've got multiple centuries, millennia and a half of time, and there was stuff all over, like uh, um, Canaanite, other type of of artifacts. Everything was up, and over a thousand years, it came down that mountain weather let it come down so they're finding older things on top of newer things and it really confused them until they realized okay here's the process of what happened so they found all this stuff so that's kind of a very quick update with the artifacts and the things that they found now let's just get out of this one okay here's your map the only mention of Magdala in the Bible. There's only one. Uh, who has Matthew 15, 39? Go ahead. And he sent away the multitude and got into the boat and came to the region of Magdala. Okay. What had just, in, in your context, what had just happened prior to that? The feeding of the 4,000. Feeding of the 4,000. Now we know the feeding of the 5,000 is your more popular one. That happened on Gentile territory. Um, Jewish territory, where did the feeding of the 4,000 happen? I just gave you the answer. Yeah, Gentile territory. It would have happened right over here, near the near that Decapolis area we were talking about. So after he finished this, it says he got in the boat and he took off and he came back over to Magdala. And it makes total sense because Magdala had a big port. It was a very... Uh, history says it was a very uh, prosperous business for fishing, fishing, the fishing industry. And we'll, we'll see that again in a minute. So that's what that's the only time we see this place listed. Now, what what do we know about this town? What do you or sorry, or let's, let me put it another way. Who do we know was from this town? Mary Magdalene. So Mary of Magdala, Mary Magdalene. This is where she was from. So what? this is where we're going to put all these verses I gave you. What do we know about Mary Magdalene? Because she, this is home for her. And, and let, me just, let me just say this before we start looking at these verses. Jesus spent time here. And when we get to some of these pictures, for me, this was an amazing place because of it was it was there when Jesus was there, what we're going to look at. So keep this in mind. But Mary Magdalene, let's look at some things we know about her. Um, let's start with Mark 1540. There were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of James the West and of Joseph, and Solomon. Okay, so Mary Magdalene was where? In that verse, she was near the cross. She was looking on at the crucifixion. Okay, at the crucifixion, and one of the two of the words that you just read were she was looking at it from afar, afar off. She was a ways away from the cross, watching what was happening. So that tells us where she was while she was watching it. She stayed back. Now, who has John nineteen twenty five? Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother sister Mary, the wife of Jesus, and Mary Magdalene. So now Mary Magdalene is by the cross, looking at him. They started way back, and now they've worked their way forward. And so as people are getting sick of seeing the torture, the murder of our Lord, 
they're dispersing. And these ladies kept getting closer and closer until they are right there loving their Lord. She, and, and this is the point I'm trying to push with this. Mary Magdalene was there. And the only reason she's there, it's not that she was a thrill seeker. She loved Jesus. Just keep that in mind. We're seeing here, she was there through thick and thin. She was there through hard times. Jesus came to her and she was demon possessed too, right? She had like seven demons or something in the story. Yes. Like yes, that's no, that's good. Because it is, and I love it when you ask questions before we get there. That's great. That's exactly what he did. Jesus came and he cast demons out of this lady. Did she have much to be thankful for? Yeah. Here's where we're in danger. Now, <laughs> Spoiler alert. You know what I'm going to ask you at the end of this? What are lessons we can learn? Okay, we're getting lessons we can learn as we go through this. So be thinking of these because that's what you're going to share at the end. But as you and I realize what Jesus has done for us, we're going to be grateful. As you have this attitude, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm not trying to be insulting when I say this, but there's sometimes I think we as uh, churchy Americans who haven't done all these bad things in life, we're just pretty good people. And God didn't save me from much. I got saved as a five-year-old. I'm fine. No big deal. We need to understand that we were totally alienated from God. And we need to understand the miracle of a rebirth that he did in our lives and we need we need to think on that and realize the price he paid for a nothing like us we need, we need to think on that and remember what he's done for us even as you look at people who are you hear people who will say you know i don't have a testimony i was just saved as a little guy think about what you're saying god in his mercy allowed you not to have to go through all of this smut that some have to go through and have to have memories of. That's God's grace to open our eyes at a young age. God can do this. And we need to be grateful for what he's done. So be thinking of this. So yes, um, let's look at um, Mark 16, verse 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come in the north. Okay, so Mary Magdalene, she was at the cross. She went closer to the cross. She sees Jesus, and now they've taken him down, and she goes out and gets spices and takes them. Okay, now let's think about that part for just a minute. We talk a lot about who's who is the big who's the big name guy who got spices to anoint Jesus. Nicodemus. And do you remember what we say a lot about him? Nicodemus gave him what? What was the big gift that he gave? Somebody said it. His own his own tomb. Arimathea. Listen to what I mean, not what I said. He he got he gave him this tomb that indicated what? What do we know about him? Because he had this he was, not, he was rich. Then when he took all these spices, are those cheap? So this guy had money. What did Mary come with? The spices. Mary's not a poor lady. Mary's a fairly, we believe, well-to-do lady. Those spices cost her some bucks. We'll come back to that one. Mark 16, 9. Thank you for catching me on my mess up. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Okay, there's your there's your verse. He had cast out seven demons. I like, I like the fact that he appeared first. Think about who he's appearing to. I mean, in the culture, Jesus wasn't anti-woman, like some would want to say. He, he, he treated women really, really well. But still, women were a lower class of people. 
he appeared to a woman first, gave her the privilege of going and telling the disciples, I've risen, you go tell them. He gave a woman who had had demons in her that would have been a so that would have been a social a stigma, whatever word that is. He gave this woman the privilege of being the first one to see him. Um, let's look at this passage uh, around the same time there, John 20. Uh, there's two of you. There's an 11 through 14. 14, and then the next through 18. Go ahead and just pick right up when they stop. Okay. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping, and as she wept and stood down and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they laid him. Now when she said, when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet descended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascended to my father and your father and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. So it's not just that Jesus kind of whoop, appeared, go do this and whoop, disappeared. Jesus came, revealed himself and he spent quality time with Mary. Talking with this lady. Now, here's what the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of this, 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 the first one, if it was going to be me saying who's going to be first, what makes sense? It's going to be Peter, James, John. These are the guys. These are the leadership. These are your big wigs that you would think would be the ones that are going to be that, that special place with Jesus. And the special place was an ex-demon possessed woman reputation from the past she had issues but she, here's the point she loved jesus she was faithful to jesus do you realize that jesus is not so impressed with how great of a ministry some big name pastor may have as he is with just us being faithful He's looking for faith. He's looking for people that trust him, that want to walk with them. It's and that's all of us. I and mean, none of us have excuse. He rewarded this lady. And it's a beautiful picture for us. We can have this closeness. Yes. Yeah, if I could add one thing. Please. If you think about it. The, the disciples weren't the ones that went to the women. They were the first ones. Yes. They got a burden and went to the disciples. They still hide now. So they had more faith. Believe in what he said. So that they all right. They went to God. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's kind of a, a good reminder. It's, sometimes you, you, you hear people who talk about... Um, well, surely the pastor is just very spiritual. God, he's just you know right next to you know, right next to Jesus. I don't think so. See what I've seen a lot with just in my history, a lot of godly ladies, a lot of godly men who are just faithful people, and that's that's what makes a church go. And it's it's just good for us to understand. God delights to work with weak things. My us. and I'm thankful for that. And I think because it say exactly what she was doing when she was being the but it does speak about the poor demoniac who tore off his clothes and she went down and moved. Um, kind of harassing church that people were afraid to go even near them, mm -hmm. probably because he might find something. 
but sometimes when you don't talk about something, you can talk about the details. Sometimes people just, it makes it more, when you start going into detail, sometimes like, oh, that's exaggerated. But for her, it just, just mentioned it kind of I think you said in the county became 70 years. Now there, there was a story about the demonic act and how bad he was. And I turned to cast 70 years and went, what was she doing when she was possessed? How bad was it? They were banging like a paper chain or something. I don't think so. And we're gonna see that in that next verse, because that's a good point. We don't know exactly what she was doing. I'm gonna say this. I would say she was a worldly woman, she wasn't saved. And that's something we need to remember too. We should not expect the unsaved to act like us. They, if they're acting like us, we got a problem on one side or the other. But with her, let's look at this last verse, uh, Luke 8, 1 to 3. And it came to pass afterward that when they went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with them. And certain women which had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary Paul, or Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. In, jo in Joanna, the wife of Chusa, very peculiar, in Susanna, and many others which ministered unto them of their suffering. Okay, so notice what these verses are telling us. Those ladies ministered to him of their stuff, of their substance. They provided for him. These ladies, okay, if you're going to provide for somebody, something is necessary. What do you have to have if you're going to meet some needs? You got to have the stuff. She had the stuff. Mary Magdalene was not a poor lady. She had some bucks. She was funding Jesus and the disciples as they did their mission trips. She, she was part of the one funding it. Now, as we look at Magdala, we're going to see where they believe she lived. I'll say, yeah, who knows? Because they, they don't know. They're, they're guessing. But the assumption is the lady had some bucks because she was funding all of these trips. She was feeding 13 guys plus. So that's a lot of that's a lot of people to help do this far. So she was helping with all of this. So let's start and look into some of these pictures as we go through. Uh, some of these, for whatever reason, I got them out of order, so bear with me. This is a like an overall picture right up. I keep doing it with the mouse. I'm sorry. This area, these nice glass, this is that Catholic motel, or the motel that the Catholics own. It is a ritzy place. It's nice, but right out, you have to go through that nice lobby, this beautiful place, in order to get to these ruins, and they know it. They're smart. So... In this area right here, do you see that right there? We've seen that before. That's that Magdala stone that we've looked at at another point. Let me see if I can move this. So this area, that, and this is not it. This is a replica of the Magdala stone. But this area right here, you see the stone benches coming around here. That is, and we're going to see better pictures than this. That's the synagogue. That is where they, this is where Jesus would have stood and taught. That is where he would have had a replica of. That is where he would have put the Torah as he read. This is where his people in Magdala, decent sized little village, that's where they would have been sitting. Jesus walked in this place. This is awesome for me. It helped me to see this. Let's look at some more of these. Okay, there's the stone. Now, here's the here's where I may be wrong. There was the one I said, the replica sitting in the middle is out in the open. This one is under glass here. My understanding was this was just an older, better replica and that the original was in the museum in Jerusalem. Some people have said this is, this is it. Uh, I, I don't really care. One of them is it, one of them is not, but... What these have is all of these inscriptions, and this is these go all the way around. And where is the one? There. This, recognize what that is? The menorah, the lampstand. This is it. And this is the 
oldest known um what's the word um depiction thank you the oldest known depiction of a menorah so this this is the oldest they found and so that's why this thing was such a huge find when they found this synagogue it was there and so they found this th this menorah um let me go through a little bit more of the temple area that's just the, okay so here's the top of it this is where they would have these intricate carvings but this is where they this would be like our pulpits this is where they would put their torah and roll it out so they could read it. okay this is this is starting to get into some of the ruins that they found and keep in mind we're going to see a, a straight down picture on some of these things right here this i'll ask you let's let's just look at it no nope, i'm back i told you they were out of order okay we'll go back to those other pictures trust me here is the tile work. And you'll notice, I just love this. All these little stones are what made this up. These things are good. As we went inside other, and you'll see these later in, into Jerusalem. Um, I forgot what church it was, or I had the pictures of it, but they, they had, it looked like all these beautiful colored mosaic thing and as you get up close it's just a bunch of little ugly rocks that they put up there and it turns into a beautiful masterpiece and that, that's really what this is i mean think about this those are the mosaics that our lord would have walked on and i'm going to suggest what do you notice about these what um beauty wise i think they're pretty but what do you notice about them that may not be what don't you see? Color. You see two colors here, not multiples. And when you see only two, that tells you something. It tells you this was a poor synagogue. They didn't have all the bucks. Uh, I believe it was just in this past year they found another synagogue that they're unearthing in this same area. They believe there were two. And the one they found had color. It was the, they had just like some today, the rich church, the poor church. Where do you think Jesus would have spent most of his time? Jesus walked on those stones and he taught people in that place, one of which was Mary Magdalene. So he would have been coming in here. You come in one door, there's two doors going out. Those go to the classrooms where they would teach the kids, teach other people, but he would have come into this area, sat at this menorah, and taught the people sitting around on these benches. And I left this as this moving shot because it took us back to right in here. So you can see here's where the, the people would sit, primarily your men, and then you have areas off of each side. Whoa, I don't know how I did that. Okay. So this was impressive to me just to think that I am looking at the place and I couldn't walk out there. I wanted to so bad, but it's blocked off. But this is the place where Jesus would have taught people. And there is a complete just panoramic of everything that was in the synagogue area. So this is the place we looked at a minute ago. Think of what this village did. What was their big um, industry? Fishing. fishing and i'm gonna i'm gonna challenge that just a little bit not that they necessarily i'm sure they fished but they're known for the fishing industry what do you think these things are you're getting really on this is getting really close that's good magdala was the ship fish there? Huh? They pair the fish there or? yes these they had live wells some of these were for live well, where they would store the fish. A lot of them, I was told, were like sardines. I mean, this, that's where they stored them. But they also, they were known for their salt fish. That's, that was their industry, was salted fish. So they would have the salt, they would have the, 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 the live wells, and they, had, they made salt fish and they distributed it. That was their business. And so they found numerous of these salt fish places Here's where they got, here's your aqueduct. 
where they would bring water in and that would be from the lake for both the live well fish, but also they needed, it's Jewish, they need ritual baths. And the ritual baths were very specific. So let's, you'll see some of these as well. This one, they have water in, some of this is just rainwater that fills these things up. For it to be a ritual bath, it is not a bathtub, it's not a swimming pool. The ritual bath has to have moving, the water has to be able to move. It has to pass through. And one of the things you'll notice, there's more pictures of it, but right down in this area, the water could come through and there's like an aqueduct area that would go, go out of one and go into another. They found one house that had five ritual baths. And just, just let's, let's put it in our terms. They found a five, bed, a five, a five bath house. If you've got five bathrooms in your home, you've got most likely a fairly large home. That's going to be a home that would cost normally a little bit more money. Okay, so they found a wealthy home here that had, this is just part of a home. And so some have suggested it may have been Mary Magdalene's. They have no clue, but it's a nice little theory. But that was a, it, it is, You've got your rich, you've got your poor, and now right, right in this, we're in the rich neighborhood. You can see the, I'm saying tunnels, the aqueducts, where the water could pass through. And so they, they've uncovered in a tremendous area. One person estimated that they've had, they, this little town could have had up near it, the house. It was a, it was a little town. It was a decent sized town in and around it. Now, here are some of the places that I was showing you where some of those artifact things could have slid down on top. So that's why I left this picture in there. And again, getting back to the ritual baths that were there, there's the aqueduct system that was going under everything. I had the strange desire to want to get in it and travel it and see if it would see where it, what it looked like. But I resisted. Okay. This has nothing to do with anything. This is inside the Catholic area. This is one of the chapels. It is nothing of period or nothing like that. It's just where people can go in and talk. And that's one of our guys, Bob, who uh, they had each person being able to do things. So the guide, and that's just the view uh, from inside their chapel. It's the chapel of the boat or something like that. I think that was the name of it. But just the reason I left that as well was it just shows you how close to the coast, beautiful view. This is what these people have been seen on a regular basis, uh, obviously office, um, not including the chapel, but the view and everything, it was just a beautiful uh, place, but I was impressed. And I was especially like the fact that we can see where Jesus, one of the places that Jew Jesus taught, where Jesus walked, where we can see where he was at. And for me, it just kind of brought it back. It brought it to life. It does. It does. And it was an awesome thing. Okay. That's the picture. So what can we learn from these scriptures that we saw from this place? Give me one truth that we can take home with us. Anybody? Well, you know, we, we know that, that Christ was, was very... Um, mostly seems to be spending a lot of time with the, the outcasts or um, but you know guys like the demons with the Berenthea, Mary Magdalene um, Jesus did not turn away anyone of any of any standing or class and uh, so it's a, it's a it's an important it's an important thing for us to internalize as well uh, not to write certain classes or groups of people off. Um, and, uh, and I think, I think uh, you know, that's, they, and we're, we're kind of the Mary Magdalene's, you know, I mean, as far as we're well off here in America, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of good things, but we also have a lot of demons in society. A lot of, a lot of bad stuff going on. And, uh, uh, like, like you said, we've got a very gracious and a very wonderful testimony. Regardless of how early you've been saved, 
we can be so grateful for what either God has protected us from, or you know, as you as you, as you grow up and, and you know, I, I think it would be so hard to to live in a in a, in a rich and you know American society. I mean, where we have so much fun and entertainment, you know, if it if it's purely human means that finds Christ, which it isn't, <laughs> but if it was up to we would never find Christ. We would just be so distracted by everything else. But um, but Christ finds us. He found Mary. Also, it's good. Yes. I thought I was kind of thinking the same thing, but Christ came to save sinners. That's right. Do you ever get this thought in your head of you know you see certain and I see certain classes of people? certain groups of people and it's like i'm not touching them with a 10-foot pole i don't want to stay away from this and jesus loves that person as much as he loves you and me. there is no dilemma there is no discrepancy there he they just got a different sin than i got and jesus died for them you stop and think about it really think about acts and throwing in the demon because she was a serious she she did this prophesying and uh, um, she's kind of like a fortune teller uh, and the demon was cast out of her and then her owner was really angry because now she couldn't she couldn't be a fortune teller anymore. It's not a wonder, you know, not every person is being like this is wild out it's wild out of the how many people who are doing that normal and they're very much accepted by society? We don't know. We have to get little, we have to understand when we hear little things that they say in real life. I'm glad Jesus can save. He can change hearts. And he did that with Mary. That's great. What else? About two miles. Absolutely. Excellent point. Say that again. Jesus always started with things people knew about. Yes. And then moved into the spiritual. He was a master. He talked about men who man wasn't someone who wanted to feel, so he that's men in the marketplace, but then back and got some more. And the ones who've been there the longest, but they would get more than the people who just showed up. Oh, about an hour before they're done. And now they all have the same thing. That's salvation. You can be uh, saved when you're six years old, and you can live to be 96. And you do go to heaven. And when someone comes in and hears the word of the Lord and he's moved, he's never heard anything like that before he's 30 years old. That's I've never heard this. He gets himself to Christ and three weeks later, he's still in the Very much so. It's a lesson for all of us. <laughs> it's the same reward. You still get to go to be the Lord. That's right. You only serve him three weeks. And what's the key with that? How should we be serving? And again, using Mary Magdalene, how did she serve Jesus? How would we describe her? She gave him money. She was faithful. I, I like that word. She was faithful. It, I would say a lot of people in here may say, you know what? I don't have a ton of money. I can't be, I can't be the I can't be the giver like she was. Can we be faithful? Yeah. 
Let's be faithful. That's all. He, that's what he wants. That's what he requires. Let's be faithful. In whatever way that may be. Maybe it is money, but you know what? Let's be faithful. What's another one? One of the things that stood out to me as I was thinking with Mary was she, it's one thing to say, okay, Jesus had, and he did, he had this massive following. There was times when he was teaching that it was exceptionally, in some parts of that culture, it was popular to follow Jesus. It was popular. It was an accepted thing to be with that rabbi and to be learning, to be getting free food, to be getting free health care. They had everything they needed. Mary was with him then. And then when it wasn't so popular, when he's hanging on the cross and he's dying, she is right by his side. She didn't leave Jesus when it wasn't popular. Isn't that easy to do? That when all of a sudden people want to turn on you and people are wanting to, to ridicule you or they don't want to hear you, maybe they're going to sneer, whatever the word is. Are we still going to be faithful when it's not popular to follow Jesus? And Mary was. And, and I'll, I, I'll say it this way. She, not that it, I'm not saying this is a universal thing. It can happen to everybody. She was rewarded majorly for her faithfulness. What better reward than to see the, to be the first to see the risen Jesus? She was rewarded for being that faithful lady. Let you and I be faithful. It was an awesome thing. And it's kind of in the same vein. You noticed when the passage that was, I forgot which one of you read it, but when Mary was just downright grieving, she went, you know, where is my Lord who's taken his body? She was grieving. Let me just tell you, when we're grieving, Jesus delights to meet with us. Jesus doesn't deserve us. He will not despise the contract heart. Thank you. That's our Lord. That is what he's like, and we should be we should be praising him that we serve such an awesome Savior. He loves us. He cares about us. He will never leave us or forsake us. He's there for us, just like he was with Mary. I really don't think Jesus brought up the past. And the point that Rebecca had made earlier do you think she had kind of a nasty past? I'm going to say, yeah. The lady was demon possessed. She was, and she, she was an unsaved woman doing unsaved woman things. And you know what? She got converted. And she became a saved woman doing saved woman things. She was following Jesus. Jesus' commands are pretty simple to the apostles. Follow me. Yeah. Care about your past. Pick up your whatever you got. Just your shirt. Follow me. Do everything you got. That's right. It's been good. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, points you want to bring up before we close? Okay, we will shut this down.